title of my message simple and I'm going to call the choir back up very shortly because we're just going to praise God from the open heavens it says be thankful and this morning before I, I had actually went through the open heavens my message was going to be gratitude so when the open heaven says be thankful I said glory be to God amen gratitude gratitude is a show of appreciation you know, I tell people, I went for a naming ceremony the other day and I said, you know, wages is what you worked for. And so if you go somewhere and you give them 40 hours of your time and when you get at the end of that week or month or whatever that they, they pay checks, paycheck is for, they pay you only for 30 hours. You are going to go back to your HR department and say, there's a problem. You guys owe me 10 hours. Let's say you have paid leave. And then you go on leave, two weeks paid leave. And then at the end of the paid leave, you come back, they did not pay you for the leave. You say, no, you guys owe me money. So wages is money that you earned, that you worked for. That is why they call it earnings, wages, paycheck. Reward is something. I remember we had a dog some time ago and um, the dog got lost. And so I took photographs, I had photographs of the dog and I did flyers and I, we did a reward of $100. And I think the person that stole the dog's friend or daughter was so enticed by the $100 that we got our dog back. No questions asked because it was just a funny thing and they went to a parking lot and they returned the dog for the $100. But that's a reward because it was promised unto the person. Amen. But there's another level which is what we call a gift. A gift is something that you don't deserve. You did nothing to get it. For example, the gift of life. When a child is born, it's not because the child wrote an application to God and the mother deserves to have a child or the father deserves to have a child. It's just because God in his infinite mercy decided to give you a child. The gift of life. That's why every time I wake up, the first thing I say is, Father, I thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Because there are people who slept last night and they didn't wake up today. There are people who were just walking, jogging, and something happened to them. It's not something that you earn by serving God. Because God is sovereign. So any time you get something that you think you have earned, oh, because I fasted, because I prayed. No, there are people that are fasting more than you. There are people that are praying more than you. There are people, do you know that somebody that you consider to have mental health challenges on the street, no mask, no sanitizer, no COVID, and somebody else with all the mask, with all the sanitizer, has COVID. And then two people, somebody has kidney problem, dialysis, gets COVID. Another person, macho man, gets COVID. The one with dialysis survives. The macho man dies. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't work God out and say, it's because I deserve to be alive. When you started your journey in life, most people here are Nigerians. If you think back to where you started from, and you think to where God has brought you. And you think to where he's taking you. You need to be grateful. There's a story in the Bible which was our Bible reading. I'm not going to read it but I'm going to summarize it. In Luke 17, 11 to 19. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Ten lepers. Their leveler was leprosy. All of them were lepers. And they encountered Jesus. And he healed them. Not for money, not for tithe, not for offering. Just heal them. And as the, nine, and the ten were going, they became whole. Or they became healed because they were not whole. And then they said, ah, we, we are whole. We are healed. But the ones that said they were healed just said, hey, we are healed. And they ran on with their blessing. And one of them said, it is that man that healed us. Maybe he called the others. Let's go back. Say, no, 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 I'm not going back. Uh, there's something I have to do. So only one 
And the one, the Bible made it even more complicated. It was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans have no dealings with Jews. We know that from the Bible. He ran back to Jesus and said, thank you. Gratitude. And Jesus, to show you that gratitude matters. Jesus could have said, God bless you. Or bless you, my son. He said, we're not ten healed. Where are the other nine? This is the issue. We're not ten healed. Where are the other nine? I've said this before. Again, we are mostly Nigerians, so you can relate. There are people here and people watching me online that before they came to the U.S., they were praying, fasting, speaking in tongues, washing the church toilet, following their pastor as if their pastor was a God, all because they said, God, you must do it. I won't let you go until you give me visa. Holding on to visa as if it's paradise. And by some miracle, some got the visa lottery. Some people here did not even play the visa lottery. I'm sorry if you don't understand visa lottery. We can't explain it. Google it. Some people did not even play. Somebody else played for you. Is that not favor of God? And you just got the letter. You that you have been living at your address for 15 years. No single letter has ever come to that address. You know, my people know what I'm talking about. But that one letter showed up. You opened the letter. You gathered all the documents together. And you got here. Some people, they had to go to the embassy. I remember when I first used to go to the U.S. back in the 80s, you would have to go to the embassy. I'm telling you this. Older people will know what I'm saying. You would have to go to the embassy like 2 a.m. to queue in the line. And the embassy will not open till 8 a.m. So for some people, you have to hire people. You will rent somebody to stay in the line for you. Am I lying? Uh-huh. You would have to pay somebody to stay up all night and then you will show up. And if they say they are only taking 200 and you are number 201, you have to come another day. But you were faithful in application. Faithful in prayer. Fervent. Knowing God. Tongue speaking. Then you arrived at JFK. Things started to change. Some arrived at the airport, nobody to meet them. Some arrived at the airport, the person that met them, made them to suffer so much. Whatever your story is, you went through that story. But what I'm saying is that where you started is not where you are today. But many are now complaining to God that this house is too small. Instead of thanking God, that Father, I thank you that you even brought me here. Father, I thank you for divine health. Father, I thank you because when I arrived here, I was single. Now I'm married. Father, I thank you because when I arrived here, I had no children. Now I have grandchildren. Father, I thank you that I used to sleep in a basement with mold and water. And now look at where I am. Some are supposed to be saying, Father, I thank you because I used to walk and catch the bus. I'm going from Long Island to Queens. It will take me four hours now. I just get in my car. Now you're abusing the car. And God is looking at you and saying, what is wrong with this boy? What is wrong with this girl? Does this boy not know where I brought that boy from? Complaining is easy. But it is not what God wants. Before you approach the throne of grace to obtain mercy, you must go with a heart of gratitude. Gratitude is not when you come to church to do thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. They say hallelujah. Yesterday, I was going here. You talk more about yourself than God. I did this. I did that. I No, 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 no. Gratitude is when you wake up in the morning. Nobody's there. And you say, Father, I thank you. These five fingers are still working. <laughs> this one has made it ten. I can wiggle my toes. Just two weeks ago, I hurt my my leg in some freak. I can't even explain it to you. It could have been worse. And just because I could not walk properly, I couldn't come to church on that Sunday, two Sundays ago. The next Sunday, I had to come with a cane and struggle up so that you guys won't stress me. Said, pastor, Pastor, what happened? What happened? In the pain, I just be managing it and, you know. But glory be to God, it's getting better. 
is healed in Jesus. You see, I'm wearing slippers and native. I don't want to wear shoes. But next Sunday, I wear my shoe, wear my suit, and I'll run up the, up the pulpit by the grace of God. Amen? But the little thing called this leg is important. If you have to be hopping like this everywhere you go, you will know that this leg is important. If they cut off a thumb, you will know that although these four fingers are long, this thumb is the only reason you can grip something. Without your thumb, you can't grip anything. I was explaining it to some people when we were doing, I think, Bible study. You know, in the Old Testament, when they catch some kings and they don't want to kill them, they just cut off their thumb so they can't hold the sword. Eliminate your thumb from your life and see whether you'll be able to eat. You have to eat like this. Everything is useful. God, the master designer, designed you from head, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet for a purpose. Why don't you thank him? Thank him that you can see. Appreciate him that you can hear. Appreciate him that you can dance before him. Appreciate him that you even have a voice. Some people, I don't know what they call it in medical terms, those, those people that they can't talk because of cancer has ravaged. What, what do they call it? No. No, no. Well, if they remove the trick, but there are some people that cancer has eaten all their throat. They can't talk. They have to use, I saw it on mesothelioma, where they say some people have, then they put something on their chest to really help them to talk. There are people that are paralyzed from the neck down. I'll never forget, I told you in 1987, I remember precisely because my sister was getting married. And in those days, my sickness of choice was malaria. God delivered me from malaria now. But if I have malaria, I go to hospital. I'll be, I was admitted. I couldn't go for my sister's wedding. And the man next to me was a medical doctor, paralyzed from the neck down. And I've always liked older people. So we were talking. He's not going anywhere. I'm there with the drip. So I was telling him, so I asked him the question nobody would ask, but I was young. I was maybe 18 or 17. I said, so he, he, his car went under a tractor trailer that was parked, that was broken down on the road, and he got paralyzed. And I said, sir, do you wish that you died? And I'm sure nobody would have asked that kind of question. He said, very good question, very intelligent man. I don't want to say his name now. He's passed on now. Because we, were, we became best friends. We were next to each other. Old, my older gentleman. He said, do you know something? I thank God. So I was thinking, thank God for what? You are in the bed, paralyzed from neck down. I have malaria. By the grace of God, in another four or five days, I will go home. So he said, after his accident, he wished he died. He said, but God now revealed to him. You see, in all things, the Bible says, give thanks. It's, it's easy to thank God when things are working. This man was paralyzed from neck down. He said, do you know what? I was able to pursue the lawsuit against the tractor trailer company. And after I pursued that lawsuit, I won. He said he had not finished his house because he was living, he was a lecturer, he was a doctor in the University of Ife in those days. And he said he was able to complete his private house so that his family could move to their private house. And when he recovered, he was still paralyzed neck down, he was a paraplegic lecturer in the University of Ife. And he lectured for another 10 years or so. And he was still able to draw his salary. He was able to, he told me, I was able to counsel my children. I was able to see them get married. He gave one or two of his daughters away in marriage from paralyzed neck down. Instead of complaining and say, God, why me? God, why me? He said, well, it is what it is. I will still praise God. And when he started listing his achievements, after paralysis, I was thanking God for him. And he said, when I'm finished, when I'm done, I will go. Amen? You have to understand that gratitude is what brings God, brings you to God's attention. Many of us have, will live a life of complaint. As soon as you cross the first hurdle, you were living in a basement. Then, by the grace of God, they rented out the one-bedroom apartment to you. You celebrate the one-bedroom apartment. Then you start complaining. Oh, this one bedroom is too small. This is too small. Oh, woo, 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 woe is me. Why am I suffering? But have you forgotten where you came from? I laugh at many of our people. There's a bag that they call Ghana must go in Africa. 
when you were coming here, not only were you carrying the Ghana must go, you clutched it because that's all you, you were walking like this in the airport. You didn't walk even like this. You didn't even know suitcases had wheels. Now, if they send you back to where you are coming from, you will need 240 feet containers to take everything that you have acquired. Why won't you thank God? Why would you be complaining? If you think back at the people that you started elementary school with, they were smarter than you, they were more beautiful than you, they were more, they were born into a family that you considered was better than you, but they are no more. You just look on Facebook, you say, ah, John is dead. You say, what? But it's not because you are better or they are better. By the grace of God, God still has something he wants to do with you. And instead of you to thank God for where he has brought you from, many are still complaining. Brethren, don't complain. Look at every problem as a challenge. That you just have this challenge right now. No problems. I was telling the ministers when we were praying today, I said, there's a little secret that means some people don't know. I'm, I don't want to say I'm short-tempered, but I can be short-tempered. I just want to make progress. When we set a goal, let's achieve it. I don't want people to come and be complaining about, why didn't you do it? What about this? What about, let's, okay, there's a problem. What's the solution? Amen? You are not married. Okay. What do we do about it? Let's sit down and talk to you. Let's talk about you as a person. Why are you not married? What is going on in your life? If all you do is come to church every Sunday and you stay from morning till night with me and my wife and we'll be praying, 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 praying. How will somebody find you? You have to pray a little bit and we have to go out. You have to go out for events. You have to look at your character. Have you been pushing away the people that are, are, are coming? Is there something that you can do better? You pray, but you make a decision that this is also what you want. If you are here and you've been in this country for some time and your income increases by one dollar or one cent or two cents every two years, you have to sit down with yourself. Don't blame anybody. There are some jobs that are supposed to be for a season in your life. You must now go and improve yourself for the next season. There are some friends that they are for a season. Look, you can't change people. You can only change yourself. So instead of complaining about it is Mr. Jumbo, he's Mr. Jumbo. He said something bad to me last year and it is affecting my life. You are a fool. Whatever Jumbo says, good for Jumbo. Whatever I believe God will do for me, I work on it. And if Jumbo predicts to me that, Pastor, you are going to be great. And I say, Amen. And I go home and sleep. What will he do for you? Stop complaining. Be grateful to God that God has given you breath. Be grateful to God that God has given you a family. Be grateful to God that God has even allowed you to know him. There are people that have never heard the message of salvation. And the first step for gratitude is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you are not even willing to give your life to Christ, that means you have not even acknowledged that Christ has done something for you. The Bible tells us we should rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always. The doctor I was telling you about from 1987, in spite of his immobility, he rejoiced. Why are you complaining? I tell you often that God does not answer complaints. He answers prayers. Rejoice always. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. My favorite scripture says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
Be anxious for nothing. COVID has turned some people into nervous wrecks. There are things that they've told us that we ought to do. When meningitis was killing people, they did meningitis vaccine. People were taking it. When your children, all of us, before our children went to school, they have measles, mumps, and rubella, MMR. They will ask you for the vaccination card that you need. If your, if you, if your children's vaccination are not complete, they can't go to school. Did you ask them what is in the vaccine then? Don't let the enemy confuse you. They say wear a mask. Wear it. Wash your hands. Wash it. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Don't live in fear. Fear causes torment. Fear is bondage. I'm not saying be foolhardy. The inspector general, the surgeon general says on the pack of cigarettes that cigarette smoking is injurious to your health. So don't say, well, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. No. The Bible says apply your heart to wisdom. It says wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, it says get understanding. And wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Knowledge by itself is nothing. Many people know Christ. Maybe I will correct that. Many people know of Christ. But few know Christ. Many people have heard messages like this. Where I said John 3.3 3 says, Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. And yet they don't give their life. Why don't you give your life to Christ? Why don't you make that decision today? What is the stumbling block? The first show of gratitude is giving your life. All of us as parents or as husbands and as wives, if you see, if you love your wife, you'll give her gifts. If you love your husband, you'll do things for him. The reason why you help your parents is you love them and you are appreciative of what they have done for you when you were young. So if you as human beings, the Bible says, who amongst you will give his son a serpent instead of fish or stone instead of bread? If you being wicked, not even being good, as earthly people do that, how much more your heavenly father, the one that has blessed you, we should give thanks to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says we are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. As Christians you must show appreciation to God by loving one another. Not by backbiting, lying, cheating, defrauding each other, pulling each other down. In Sunday school today, they were saying, if somebody is going through something, don't say it's God that's doing it. How do you know? When people die, they say, oh, the good people die young. That means all old people are wicked. No. People die when they die. There's no curse. I've told you people, I don't believe it. You may not, you know. A lot of people keep running from pillar to post, looking for solution to problem that there's no solution. I believe, and I'm not fatalistic, I believe the day I'm going to die, it's already set. There's nothing I can do to change it, in my opinion. When I pray that I shall live and not die, to declare the glory of the Lord, I'm not talking about living here. Live and not die means that you will have eternal life, which is salvation. There's nobody that will not die here. We all have to die. The date is what we don't know. My prayer is that God will not let it be too early and that it will not be painful. Good health, no dementia, serving God, worship God, and that I make heaven. Be grateful. Everyone here is already blessed. There's nobody here that is homeless. Nobody. There's nobody here, I can say it boldly, that is hungry. If you are hungry, see us. There's food pantry downstairs. Nobody. You just have a few challenges. I remember a medical doctor that came to me. She didn't do well in one exam and she was very depressed. 
get into a level of just major depression and say, Pastor, um, you know, this is so, I don't know, everything I do, I, not everything I do, everything that the person does, they said, they fail. I said, I said, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm doing my residency, but there's this exam. I failed it twice. I said, let's Google in my office. I Googled how many medical doctors are in America. I've forgotten the number. Let's say 700,000. I don't know. I've forgotten I said, how many citizens are in America? 350 million. I said, if you do the math, I'm not good in math. Do you know the percentage of human beings that are medical doctors in America? And you are telling me that you have been failing. And this same you, you passed elementary school. You passed middle school. You passed high school. You, you did your first degree. You got into, what do they call the medical exams that they first do? MCATs. You pass the MCAT. You are a failure. Can you imagine? That person is a failure. You pass the MCATs. After the MCATs, they did all the clinicals. They did everything. They passed. And after they passed, they matched because they have to even do matching to be able to go to a, college, to a university or a hospital where they do their residency. And now you are in your third year of residency because you failed one exam twice. I say, even if you fail it six times, you are still great. I said, just go back and do it. He said, Pastor, after you put it that way, uh, I'm kind of not so bad. I said, yeah. I said, you see, the devil is a liar. The devil will maximize the mini minor and minimize the major. Do you know how many people you went to elementary school on that are on drugs? Strung out on drugs. Do you know many, how many of them that have, 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 have ruined their lives? And you graduated as a medical doctor. And the devil is telling you because you failed one exam twice. Twice. And that's the devil. But what you should do is go to God for, with gratitude. Anytime you have hit that crossroad, anytime that you are at that point where depression wants to creep in, anytime that you are at that point where you are fed up, go back. Go back to the ancient landmarks of your life. Go back to where God brought you from. Go back to when you used to run barefooted. You know, I see our young children today, they have all the games and they are unhappy. When I was younger, one tire, one, um, what do they call it? Um, hanger. My people know what I'm talking about. You take the hanger, you undo the hanger, you straighten it, you bend it, and you just take a little thing, and you just be running with it. And you are so happy. You are so blessed. You go and fetch water. When you get to the place and there's water, you say, glory be, ah! you'll be so happy that you are suffering to go and fetch water. And now you go to the bathroom, you turn on the water, it's hot and cold. How many of you had hot and cold when you were young? In Hamatan, you bath with cold water. And you measure the water, you take a little, pour it on one side of your head, you do this. You pour it a little more, a little more, a little more, until you just decide, mm, you just put everything on. How many people know what I'm talking about? Uh, be, be, be pretending, be doing as if you don't know. You don't know. Then you, and you come out, you look white like snow. <laughs> and fever won't get you. You are sick, they just take rub. One, don't put it in your nose, put it in your nose, rub all your neck, rub your chest. By the time you are on fire, you will just say you are well. <laughs> Even you, you will say you are well. And now you are complaining. You are complaining that the train is late, five minutes. You are complaining. I remember Sandy or one of those year, year storm. They took like three days. People almost died. Oh. There are some places there's no light. So what, what I'm saying to you, don't let the enemy make you feel you are a failure. Are you following me? Go back and say, Father, you brought me from fetching water. You brought me from living in a basement. You brought me from living with my cousin who was so horrible to me or my aunt or my aunt that used me as a slave. You brought me from walking. There was a gentleman that I, 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 I went to pick him up one day. He was in this church. So he said he was going somewhere and I said, okay, I'm going to pick you up and we'll go where you're going. And he 
And I got to the train station and I drove to his house. And the road is Long Island Railroad or whatever. Long Island, I, Long Island Avenue. It's so long and it was winter. There was snow everywhere. So I asked him, how do you get to the train station for the job you have been going to? See, I walk. That train station must have been two miles in the snow. And that kind of person now cannot now have a jalopy or whatever you call it and you, you'll be complaining. Yes, even bicycle is an upgrade. Thank God for when you used to walk in the snow. Thank God for when you used to stand 12 hours as security guard. Thank God for when you used to work burning, doing burger and they'll be talking nonsense to you and you know you're a medical doctor or you're actually a lawyer or you're an accountant but because you have not got what you need yet, you'll just be turning the burger and you're watching them and just be minding your own business and turning the burger. Thank God for when you were pumping gas although you have a PhD and the guy that is talking to you does not even have high school diploma but you are pumping that gas knowing that you know something, God, you are still God. God, you are still faithful. I'm alive. I'll do it. I will make it. Thank God for when you were doing that security guard, working 12 hours and if anybody is off, you will take their shift. You do 18 hours a day and 4 hours, you will walk 3 hours home. By the time you get home and you sleep, it's time to wake up and walk back to the job and they'll give you $6 or four twenty-five. And out of that four twenty-five, if something misses at the job, they will even take it from your salary. So your whole salary in a week is $76. And of that $76, they say something missed at the shop where you are a security guard. They can take $42 away from it. And today, to the glory of God, <laughs> you can't even calculate your money in an hour. You just know your problem now is that IRS is taking too much money. Can IRS take money from you if you don't have money? If you earn 10 million, IRS wants to take 4, four million. Well, are you going to complain about the four or thank God for the ten? Pick one. Or you'll be earning 22,000 or 5,000 and IRS take zero. And you'll still be complaining that it's too small. Thank God. Throughout COVID, think about it. We're still standing. When people say there's a casting down, you have been saying there's a lifting up. Many of you here have been promoted. I know at least two people that have bought houses in this church. I know people that suffered sickness that should have been fatal and they recovered 100% in the church. I know people that the enemy said they will not have children. We have done not only naming ceremony, we have done baby dedication and some are even loaded for delivery again. I'm looking at one of them now. <laughs> The only thing is that COVID will not let us know what's going on until we just see you. What's going on? Just like NK now, when we pray for her, I say, this time next year, oh, pastor, no, no, no. Then she will come again next year with twins. Are we going to complain? Is it not the God that gave you one that will give you the other one? So I change the prayer. I say, as many as you ask God for, he will give to both of you in Jesus' name. Is God. We are, look, people are saying there is a problem. We are saying God is lifting us up. God will continue to lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. God will continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will continue to increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way in the mighty name of Jesus. The diseases of Egypt will not cling to you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will do it for you. But all you have to do is thank him. Let's rise. Jonah 2 9 says, But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. I don't want you to ask God for anything this morning. I just want you to spend a few minutes. Choir can come up. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just appreciate him. I want to hear your voices. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for... Look, if you have nothing to thank him of, thank him that you can hear me. Thank him for life. 
the breath that you have is not yours he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be adored he's worthy to be magnified thank him that you can stand thank him that you can walk thank him that you can think the sound mind is something that you can't give yourself it's only God thank him for your spouse if you are married if you are waiting on the Lord for a spouse thank him for the spouse that he will give you because you will not be unequally yoked with a non-believer if you are a grandparent can you imagine thank him that not only did you see your children you saw your children's children glory be to God if you are a grandparent thank him that you are going to see your great grandchildren thank him that you are going to give your children in marriage thank him for where he has brought you from give him glory he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be adored I want you to appreciate God just raise your hands to him and just say thank you I don't know what you want to thank God for today you know our month in our church this is our month of exceeding fruitfulness do you know when you see your children the children the Lord has given to you you should be thankful when you look to your left you have your spouse when you are not sleeping rough on the street when you have a house that you can go into that you call your own whether you are renting it whether you are you are you bought it thank him do you know how many people have no jobs right now thank him that you have a job thank him that you have a business I just want to worship him oh Daniel can you sing that song you deserve the glory just worship God he deserves the glory Lord we lift our hands Lord we lift our hands we bless your holy name you deserve the glory you deserve the praise and the Father, we declare today there is no one else like you. With a heart of gratitude and a heart of praise, we declare that you are great. That you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for where you have brought us from. We thank you for where you are taking us to. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your hedge of fire around us. We thank you for fighting our battles for us even when we don't know. We thank you for what you are going to do this week. We thank you for what you are still going to do in our lives. Accept all the praise. Accept all adoration. Thank you everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.